Hello and welcome back to another episode of Doctors Go Live. So today we're going to be talking about healthy bones for a healthy me. Okay, uh, life is motion, motion is life. Without health, bones, motion in life is all but impossible. Of course, this quote actually comes from our expert today. Uh, we have Dr. Harjit Singh in the house. He is the consultant orthopedic surgeon from Columbia Asia Hospital Bukit Rimau. Hello, Dr. Harjit. How are you? Hi, hi. Hi, thanks for joining us. Thanks for letting me join you all. And no problem. It's a pleasure. Yeah. It's a pleasure. Thank you so much for making time to do this. I understand that you're very busy and you've just come back from Mua, your hometown. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I'm ready to go because I've had my uh, share of uh, mother's cooking. I haven't been oh, back. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> I, fantastic. Took for, I took her for a medical appointment. So I needed to get a letter and there was a lot of yada yada. So yeah, like, now I have to work. <laughs> the yada yada is the best part, like, I think. You know, like, it's so good to speak to parents. Yeah, yeah, correct. Love. Yeah. Okay. Uh, talking about showing some love, we'd like for you to, um, uh, audience, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, we're just gonna, uh, do something different. Moving forward with doctors, uh, go live. You know, we we have these emoticons, and you see sometimes on Facebook live sessions, they people will stand, they will click on heart shapes and you know smiley faces. So this is something that you can do also in this program, so that we can get a bit of interaction to know whether you like what the doctor is saying, you like the topic of the day. Okay, so send us emoticons and show us all some love. Okay, another thing. Show me some love. Huh? Don't send. Sorry, me. yeah, love, love, sure. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Some love, that's the best part. Yeah, they don't show yeah. any don't faces and all that. Yeah. Okay. And uh, besides that, you can also share, uh, please do share the link of this uh, show with your friends and your family. And if you are in any health and wellness group on Facebook, please do share with them because uh, we are confident that the information will be very relevant and will be useful to them. Yeah. And of course, you can also leave your comments, uh, not necessarily questions only. You can relate your experiences. So um, maybe we will just pick and choose any one of these experiences and questions and the doctors can address them. Lah. Yeah, okay. So let's have some fun. Of course, if it's interactive, then it'll be, it'll be more, you know, like alive. <laughs> Lively, yeah. live. Okay, doctor, uh, I understand that you've got some slides for today. Yep, 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 I do. Okay. Um, okay. I've Shall got quite a number. Okay, uh, for introduction, the um, topic healthy bones for a healthy me. Okay, why would you, why did you choose this specifically? How, how important is it for people to know about uh, today's topic? The way I look at it is that, um, like, like we said, uh, motion is life and life is motion. I think uh, apart from being social animals, uh, which the pandemic has actually showed us how social we are yeah. uh, with mental health problems going up as we are, you know, we had to isolate ourselves from our loved one yes. for a longer period of time. Similarly, um, a lot of health issues, a lot of stress-related issues, a lot of mental health issues were actually, uh, to a certain extent, prevented as long as we kept active, whether we were active at home or whether we were active outdoors. And um, moving essentially uh, allows us to go about uh, managing the pandemic in our mind and body better. And the most essential uh, element is to have healthy bones, muscle, and joint movement. So I thought that a sing a one element which was very, very important was keeping our bones healthy. And... Uh, Having healthy bones allows for a healthy me. Hence, the topic of my uh, discussion today. Uh oh. Okay. Sorry, I can't, I can't hear you. Hello? Hello?
Yo, hi, sorry. Okay. Yeah. What happened? I mean, like, mic was off. Oh, okay. okay. You started off with a cheap joke. I was getting worried. Oh, still worried. Go across oh, still my skull. <laughs> okay. Anyway. All right, let's start. Let's start again. Um, the uh, slides, okay, that you're going to be showing me. I was just saying that I can recognize myself in one of these pictures. Okay, the one most on the on 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 the right, la. I hope so. I hope so. Yeah, yeah, on my left. Yeah. Yeah. So I I think mm. that uh, we all will age uh, over yes. time, and mm. I think that aging gracefully is the best way to age, and. Uh, being independent is important. Being ambulant mm. is important. So yeah. uh, minimize being uh, dependent on 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 the younger ones who are increasingly busy with their lives. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, the thing about it is, without healthy bones, uh, mm -hmm. we can develop fractures which are related to uh, bones which are weaker. Yes. And we. Now know that if we fracture uh, the hip, uh, it is going to cause a reduction in our lifespan in 20% yeah. of the people. Yeah. And once we fracture uh, at the hip, which is one of the most common osteoporotic fractures, the ones that are related to weaker bones occurring at a higher chance as we age, only 25% of us return to pre-operative functional level. So what it actually means is that if I was walking independent without a crutch, the chances of me getting back to uh, moving about without the crutch is 25%. Uh, in all probability, I end up having to use uh, a crutch when I move. And the incidence of these kind of fractures are actually increasing uh, you can have a look at 1997, there were 90 per 100,000 of population. But now, in the year 2010, that was 10 years ago, it's about 900 per 100,000 population. So the incidence is also increasing. Okay. Uh, doctor, can I ask you something about uh, osteoporosis? Is it inevitable for, you know, for, for those who are, who are aging? Eventually, we don't do anything about it. Is it something that happens? Yeah, so if we if we go okay, if we look at this slide, we will know that yeah. inevitably as we yeah. get older, the bone mm. density or is, is going to reduce. So initially yeah. up to the age of 30, if you look at age in years, mm. the red yeah. line being the graph for men and the blue one for women. We reach our peak bone mass at the age of approximately 30. So that is the time from young we build our bone mass. And maximal bone mass is at the age of 30. And gradually, there is a decline in the bone mass of and uh, bone density. Now, in the men, it's slower. And in the women, you can see uh, number two there is the effects occurring a little bit more rapid uh, beyond the age of 45 as osteo as uh, menopause sets in. So the protective effects of estrogen no longer there. And there is a rapid decline for about 10 years, following which you reach a uh, graph, the third part of it, which is senile. And this senile osteoporosis is related to aging. So... To answer your question directly, inevitably, uh, everybody will develop some amount of osteoporosis. But understanding how the graph is, understanding how we can build a, a better peak, and uh, understanding how we can maintain what we actually have uh, prevents us from suffering about it later on. Yeah, because we have heard of uh, some people who are maybe in their 50s and 60s and they are still fit and they, they are you know, still working out. And then we wonder if, if they don't have any problems with, uh, with the bone health. Because if they have osteo, definitely they cannot be doing things like this, risk uh, injuries. So how do they, how do these type of people, um, you know, uh, care for their bones? Maybe this is something that we're going to find out from Dr. Hanjit today. Yeah, 
So the way I look at it, I think that's a very interesting comment and way to look at this. Okay, mm. we have to understand that uh, the bone is not just a strut of dead tissue; it's actually living yeah. tissue, and it actually molds to stress constantly. So as we move about, as we are ambulant, as we weight bear on a bone, okay, the structure of the bone is made more dense on areas which load bear, that means taking the body weight. Uh, and it is actually taken off from the areas which are less under stress. So if you look at the femur, you can see that certain areas are darker and that's the area under stress when we walk. The femur is the thigh bone and that is the part that bone is built on. So it is remodeling constantly and weight-bearing exercises uh, involve, I mean, whether it's something as simple as going for an evening walk or something more aggressive will allow this to remodel optimally and also maintain bone quality. Doctor, sorry, what Pardon? What did you mean by uh, bone remodeling? Okay, you okay. mentioned the word uh, remodel. Yeah, remodel is like, okay, yeah, is uh, that means bone is always placed by the body. Okay, it is strengthened on areas that undergo stress. That means if I am going to put weight and be weight bearing and ambulant, the parts of the body which need to hold up that weight, okay, the body will automatically build more bone and make that part stronger. This is why that we notice that if you are having something which causes a patient to be bed bound, okay, uh, we tend to notice that uh, the strength of the bone, the bone quality, the bone density is lesser. So that is called a disuse osteo osteoporosis. That means the part is not used, it's not moved, uh, there's no weight acting on it, and therefore the body just removes bone from that part. So if you look at how we define bone strength, the strength of the bone depends on the quality of the bone and the density of the bone. The density is how much bone is in a cubic area and the quality of the bone depends on the architecture, the amount of bone which is deposited and removed and also how much damage that occurs to the bone. Now all this function to maintain your bone strength. Uh, doctor, when we talk about osteoporosis, uh, which part of the body is the one that is the first to go? Okay. Or the first to get damaged? I, I mean, it's not the first to go, but I think there are <laughs> there are three point, uh, three parts which are essentially uh, the most important, uh, both orthopedically and uh, problems in these parts actually yeah. have a big ramification. One of the one of it is at the hip. So the proximal uh, of the thigh bone, where it forms the hip joint, mm. okay, is one of the most catastrophic uh, areas to lose bone, and uh, fractures mm. of the hip are known to reduce quality of life dramatically. Yeah. The second part is the wrist. The lower part of the forearm or the wrist is the other part that uh, is often compromised with the fracture when you get an osteoporotic fracture. And the third part is actually the spine. So the mid spine or the thoracic spine is the third area that often um, bears the brunt in uh, bone, which is of lower strength, resulting in a fracture. So these are the three main parts. OK, so if you were to, um, if we were to work on uh, strengthening our bone health, would you say that these are the three areas that we need to focus on? So if there are any exercises or movements that can improve bone health, we should actually uh, stress on these three areas? Yeah, so the way I look at it, I think um, concentrating on these three parts specifically mm -hmm. is, is, is not needed at all. Oh, I see. As long as the type of exercise that you do involves mm. weight bearing that means uh swimming and cycling are essentially non-weight bearing exercises 
they do not maintain uh, bone mass as 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 good as uh, running or brisk walking would. So this is something very very important. While uh, cycling and running are both good for cardiovascular fitness, the weight bearing element of running or walking uh, is good for bone health. Okay, can so, you explain? bit about uh, these weight-bearing exercises. Uh, what, what do you mean by weight-bearing? I mean, and when I said it, I thought something about lifting weights. No, no, it's not at all anything related to lifting weights. So okay. weight-bearing exercises are uh, exercises that are done where there is the effect of gravity on the body. That means walking, yes. Running, yes. Hiking, even a simple thing like a dog walk are weight-bearing exercises. Um, Non-weight bearing exercises, uh, one of the classical examples is swimming because the buoyancy of water takes off the effect of gravity, right? So these are weight bearing exercises. Going to the gym and lifting weights are not weight bearing exercises. Now, of course, we know that for healthy bones, there is, a, there is an element of muscle conditioning. And uh, sometimes if you do weight resistant exercises, they do help the function of the muscle envelope around the bone. But the effect of gravity or weight-bearing exercises is important for bone health. So it's totally a different thing. Okay, and these weight-bearing exercises, uh, anyone at any age can do it, of course, because you were saying that it can be uh, running, but it can also be just walking, gardening, yeah. in fact. Yeah, now the... The great thing about this is that um, it is not how intense you do it. You know, some of us who are younger, we need we need to really push our bodies. But I, I'm thinking the, the current uh, consensus for bone health is that as long as you have brisk walk half an hour, uh, three times a week, right? It actually helps you maintain your bone mass optimal. Now, um, I think that's a good goal uh, for the elderly person because trying to hike up a hill without being assessed prior um, is actually not a very good way to start. But having said that, I have seen a lot of 60-year-old people hopping and jumping up uh, Bukit Gasing. But these, these, these people are often uh, already healthy and they've been doing it all the while. So I think in that way, uh, if you are going to start from the word go, essentially to keep your uh, bones healthy, you start with a brisk walk. As you gain uh, agility, you gain uh, strength, you gain flexibility, then you can up the game. Okay, all right. That's very good advice. So that we don't immediately um, not not shock the body system lah, suddenly, you know, from being very sedentary to suddenly being very active. So we have to take it Monday at a time. Is that right, doctor? Yes, yes. I think it's always easy. Uh, I mean, it's always good to take it, uh, take it at a low base and build up mm. from there. Then yeah. to you know, take it, start very high and then either you lose interest or get injured. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That's true. You have, we have to pace ourselves. Yeah, I think pacing is the word. Mm. That's a good thing. All right. Now, uh, this, so let's yeah. Look, yeah, at, uh, what are we looking at exactly? Okay, right so this is a busy slide, but uh, just look at the pictures. Now, uh, the, the, the function of uh, the body in maintaining the amount of calcium and mineralization of the bone is actually... Uh, contributed by a lot of organs in the body. The one uh, you can see the stomach and the gut right on top on the on on the left of my slide, and uh, the the absorption is regulated by certain hormones in the body, and this absorption and the effect of sunlight uh, producing vitamin D, which enhances absorption, uh, requires activation in the liver in the kidney. And if you look at the charts, there are a lot of arrows going into the bone and going out of the bone. And the most essential thing to understand from this is that there are so many things acting in concert
to maintain the in out of the bone. And there are things that are inert which we can't change and there are things that we can. So healthy diet, sunlight, uh, exercise are things that we can essentially change. So uh, that's the reason why I thought this slide was important. So if you look at a definition, the osteoporosis is characterized by low bone mass. That means the amount of bone is lesser. On top of that, microarchitectural deterioration. This is just a big word, meaning that even the quality of the bone, not only is there less bone, but the quality of that bone is also deteriorating. And it increases the fragility of the bone and susceptibility to fracture. Now, the thing about it is, I think a picture paints a thousand words. So the one on the left is normal looking bone. As you can see, it's dense. Uh, there are smaller holes compared to the one on the right. It looks more porous. It looks more like a sponge. So that's the bone, which is osteoporotic. So you can actually look at the difference. Is it possible to uh, guess how old is this patient, the one with uh, osteoporosis? This looks okay, really I bad. Can't. Yeah, I, I can't really guess. But mm. I would say that that amount of osteoporosis, if it's mm. not uh, because of any other disease causing it to come mm. about, it's probably yeah. that of about 60 years old. 60 yeah. to 70 as we get older. <clears throat> Yeah, is there such thing such a thing as early onset osteoporosis? Yes, yes, there is early onset osteoporosis. Mm. Um, mm. If we look at okay, let me just uh, interrupt by this. We improve okay, no problem, quality. Yeah. yeah, I've actually said if you what is modifiable is your calcium intake, uh, sedentary lifestyle. That's why uh, always be active. Um, High caffeine intake. Now, I love coffee, so I went and need to qualify this as two cups of coffee a day. It's not going to bother your bone quality. Uh, be mindful if you're taking more than that. Uh, excessive alcohol and uh, smoking. Uh, smoking is a no-no. Any amount is actually going to deteriorate the bone quality over the longer period of time. Uh, alcohol intake is 30 ml every day. Yeah, you're messing around with things. Okay, what can we not, modif uh, not modify? Okay, we know that as we age, we will lose bone, although we can keep it at a slower rate. Um, Caucasians and the Chinese uh, subgroups, they tend to uh, develop osteoporosis uh, at a higher incidence compared to the other... Um, racial uh, groups females is, is there a reason for that no i i i think that uh, initially it was uh, the dietary intake but we now find a very strong uh, genetic element the because as malaysians although we argue in every other thing but we are very homogeneous in our food intake nowadays so we now initially thought it was the type of food that we took but it's not actually that there is a genetic element to it. Now, um, the female gender, we know that there is the effect of menopause, speeding up that graph number two. And if you're slender build and if you have a family history of osteoporosis, these are the non-modifiable non factors. I mean, in everything in life, there are things that we can't change, but there are things that we can change. And I think this presentation is important for us to concentrate on that. Okay, now you were asking me about uh, the early onset osteoporosis. Sometimes if you are on steroid therapy uh, for disease states such as uh, autoimmune diseases or even uh, uncontrolled asthma, you tend to have the potential of developing osteoporosis early. And if you have any uh, absorption issues, like you have a gut uh, problem uh, which prevents proper absorption of uh, vitamin D and calcium, you can develop uh, osteoporosis. 
Of course, there are a lot of um, endocrine problems such as the thyroid or the parathyroid gland not working well and these can also relate and cause uh, early onset osteoporosis. And if you develop your menopause at a younger age, yes, it will cause uh, a chance of having early onset osteoporosis. I, I can't hear you. Sorry. Okay. Primary osteoporosis. Yeah, I, I understand that there are a few types of osteoporosis. Yeah. So the way I look at it is primary is the one uh, that we often uh, speak about uh, that occurring after post menopause, age related, and sometimes we don't really know the cause. And the secondary osteoporosis is the one that are caused by diseases, which I have touched upon uh, briefly just now. So if you look at the charts, there are both the primary and the secondary causes. The treatment for the secondary osteoporosis would be to identify the reason it's happening and work towards treating that. So we've come to the very important part on how not to get osteoporosis. Or is it, um, is it more apt if we were to say it's not about not getting osteoporosis, but it's about lessening the damage of osteoporosis? Yeah, I, I, I think nowadays, um, the way you put things is very, very important. Mm. If, uh, if we, we actually say that, okay, we know that as we age, bone density mm. reduces and there is a yeah. chance of having osteoporosis and yes. suffering from the consequences of a fracture we also know that there is a age point that we can build up our bone mass up to the age of 30 so if we educate the young on healthy eating habits um, not going for junk food most of the time they will be able to have healthy bones and as high a bone density as they can be. Now, the second part of it is maintaining what we have. And you can only fracture a bone if you fall awkwardly. And so, you know, if you lead a healthy lifestyle, your balance in function is better. You are more agile. You are more flexible. Your balance is better. And therefore, you, you don't get injured. So... Nutrition is important. Exercise is important. Uh, medication, yes, we do use them in established osteoporosis. Uh, that would be in discussion with your doctor because there are a lot of medications that we actually put patients on who already have osteoporosis. And also after they have a fracture, which is related to uh, low bone mass. Okay. Doctor, can we ask, uh, can we take a look at um, nutrition? Um, calcium. So basically, calcium supplements uh, would be something that you recommend? Yeah. So the way, the way I would look at it is that you have to look at your daily calcium intake. So this is a guide. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, men and women, the recommended daily intake is about 1,000 milligrams a day. Now, we know that Malaysian diet, current diet, uh, whether it's your, your, your Punjabi like me, Northern Indian, uh, Southern Indian diet, Chinese, Malay, or any other subgroup, we know that having a balanced diet will give you about 600 milligram easy in your diet. So most of the time, if you talk about cal calcium supplements, all you have to figure out is where you're going to get the other 400. And it need not be in the form of a capsule. You can just supplement it with milk, cheese, and, and, and just modify or tweak your diet. Now, that is not rocket science. Um, just Googling any food... Uh, a any food type will tell you the components and the amount of calcium that it would give you. Uh, now, all of us have smartphones and uh, smartphones have a million apps telling you the calorie intake of whatever you take. And it also tells you the breakdown. So if you look at it, 
uh, it's not only for European or Western food. You actually have that two pieces of tempeh, my favorite being from Moa, okay, would give you about two pieces of tempeh will give you about 100 milligram of calcium. One piece of tofu would give you about 200 milligrams of calcium. You know, uh, so I think dietary requirements, very doable. Asian food, delicious, high in calcium. So you don't require okay, so your yeah, there was there was a no, there was a slight disconnection just now uh, because oh, okay. I, I think there's a going on where you are because I can hear yeah. the lightning and thunder. Yeah, I tried to close okay, the window. Worries, no worries. Yeah, okay. it's okay. It was here okay, just so, now. I know it's your yeah, side. <laughs> so, so, okay. so the summary is that you don't need the doctor to tell you the kind of food that you should or should not eat. It's not rocket science. Um, we now have apps on our smartphones. We have uh, yeah. Mr. Google to tell tell us that, okay, the kind of food that we like to eat, the kind of food that mm. we usually eat, how much calcium and how much nutrition it actually gives us. So you can actually have a look for tempeh, tofu, or whatever you like. Right. Yeah, so, so that, that answers your question, the kind of food that we should eat, because it's all yeah. listed. So calcium uh, calcium pills are not necessarily the source of uh, calcium that you need to rely on because if your yeah. diet is off, like uh, Dr. Harjit, you were just mentioning all these food, and these are actually good food. It's not like you have to take, you know, bland stuff all the time. These are yeah. things that you probably, uh, you know, I eat every day as Malaysians. So that's great yeah. news. So that, that's, okay. that's, the way, that's the way I see it. Because to, to answer mm. your question about taking calcium supplements, okay, some yeah. of us um, mm. who can't meet the requirements, we take calcium mm. supplements, but we okay. would need to be mindful that not all calcium is the same. Mm -mm. There are multiple formulations of calcium. You have calcium carbonate, you have calcium lactate. Oh, so, yeah, uh, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Each of them, the absorption uh, by the body for the elemental mm -hmm. calcium is different. Mm -mm, yeah. So at least for food stuff, you kind of get an idea of, you know, a, a ballpark figure of what it's going to give you. But when you buy supplements, yes, there is a recommended dosage, but you have to look at the formulation. And that can be easily discussed with the doctor. Okay. All right. And then uh, sometimes we have calcium that comes with vitamin D. Is that better for yes. bone absorption? Um, okay. Yeah, most of the time, uh, when I prescribe calcium, I prescribe it with vitamin D because uh, uh, we understand that a lot of us uh, don't get enough sunlight and uh, vitamin D is essential for the absorption of calcium. Yeah, yeah, especially now like, because we are, you know, everyone is encouraged to stay home. So maybe vitamin D is quite a challenge. <laughs> and, okay, and the uh, benefit uh, of vitamin D is that uh, in the I'm older sorry. patient, also mm -hmm. the added benefit of vitamin D is mm -hmm. that the older patient, it also helps yeah. uh, balance and muscle function. Therefore, you don't stumble and fall mm. as much. Yeah. Okay. All right. That's good to know. Um, what about posture, doctor? Is that a factor to prevent osteoporosis? Or, or if not osteoporosis, uh, you know the picture that you showed earlier just now? The yeah. four women, yeah. at the end yeah. of it, uh, you develop a hump on the yeah, back. So the, the hump is... If you take care of your posture... No, I, I don't think uh, posture is at all related to osteoporosis. Uh, the posture is a function of uh, muscle and uh, flexibility uh, in effect. If you are an active person, you tend to have better posture. But that picture, that last picture, is actually someone who has had multiple spine osteoporotic spine fractures. So you tend to develop a curve because the structure of the spine changes as we age. All right. So it's okay. nothing to do with posture. Okay, nothing to do with posture. Right, got it. Oh, we do have a lot of questions. That's fantastic. Okay, I, I doctor. Um, 
I'm sorry, say again. No, the questions, I'm I'm sure all like sub sub. So we love for you. You can do all, do all this with your eyes closed. <laughs> no, I thought there was nobody um, online. Yeah, there, Ramai. I'm saying hi oh, yeah, to you yeah. and all. I come in. Fantastic. Okay, I mean, because it's you after all, Dr. Harajit. I know that you have been on BFM for years. Yeah, yeah. ladies and gentlemen, if you didn't know yeah, that. But Dr. you never Harajit. get to see me how I look. I actually look actually Yeah, really so great. this is what our celebrity looks like. <laughs> At last, yeah, you I need know. to follow my beard the next time. Huh? <laughs> okay, doctor. <laughs> um, what is the, this is my last question, and then we can go to okay. the viewers' question. What is the worst that can happen if we do not make the effort to care for our goals? Let's say, I, you know, I, you don't take calcium pills and you don't really care to, to you know, um, for dairy products and uh, calcium rich foods. What's the worst that can happen? I think having a hip fracture is a disaster. Mm. Of course, uh, modern orthopedic techniques allow us to treat it extremely well. And uh, yeah. rehabilitation after fracture is actually now uh, very, very good. But I think mm. this is one fracture where prevention is better than any cure that we can offer you. That is why yeah. that uh, despite uh, all the technical topics that I could speak about today, I, I chose this one, mm. that keeping the body healthy prevents you from having yeah. a fracture. We can't prevent it 100%, mm. but it reduces the chance of you having a bad fracture. And I think that that should be the goal because it allows you to continue enjoying yourself. Um, is this also... <clears throat> sorry, one last question. Uh, is this also why... You know, when we talk about... Um, our elderly group, old folks, and then um, there's always um, this thought that they should not fall because that's the worst thing that can happen to uh, an old man or woman, lah. Yeah. Like it's really, so, I'm, you know, people say orang tu jangan yeah. jatuh because if jatuh, then it's you know it's not a good thing, lah. Yeah. So the way I look at it is that. Mm -hmm. Nobody should jatuh lah, tak tentu pasal. Yeah lah, yeah lah, but, of course, of course. Uh, but, but, but the idea is that the older patient will have uh, a more fragile bone and the effects of falling yes. is uh, mm -hmm. amplified and, uh, <laughs> and okay. the bad effects are, are, are much, much more there. Having said that, at the age of 17, of when I visited my grandfather in Batwa, I wanted to eat some mango and he just hopped up the mango tree and pluck the mango for me, telling me that I shouldn't go up because I didn't know how to climb a tree well. So I think that age is a number. And uh, if we continue keeping our self healthy, both in mind and physically, I think life is always going to be fun. Okay, there you go. What's of wisdom from Dr. Harjit? Okay, now let's take a look. Uh, some of the questions that we have, of course, we've got our regular Mr. Barjish Paul Singh. He always has a thumbs up for 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 us. Okay, one question okay. from Miss Espian. Okay, hi doctor. If we go jogging every day and after a week the back feels painful, is it possible that the bone is injured or the jogging posture is incorrect? Okay, hi Yan. Thank you very much. This is a very very good question. Yeah. I just let, let the thunder go away. Okay, <laughs> now, here, we have to enjoy jogging, yes, but there is a part to jogging which we don't enjoy. That is the warm-up before the jog, okay, which includes uh, stretching and some flexibility work before the jog. And after jogging, we also need to warm down. So the way I look at it, a lot of us, they tend to, we tend to just lace up our shoes and start off straight jogging. Now, but to answer your question specifically, a lot of back pain after jogging is most likely related to muscle conditioning. So probably your flexibility is not so good and your warm up is poor. Uh, it is very unlikely that the bone is injured purely due to jogging. Um, especially on a flat surface and if the surface is soft. Most of my patients, they do complain of some soreness at the knee, uh, but never at the back. But if you also have dynamics of movement, which is not very correct, uh, like posture, okay, and the way you jog or the intensity at which you jog, 
uh, then yes, you could have some back discomfort. But this usually goes away or it's not worsened by further um, uh, sessions of jogging. If you get pain which is worsening over time, then please come and look at the doctor. Not all the time uh, back pain is something so simple. Yeah. Okay. All right. Hope that answers your question, Ms. Yan. Next question is from uh, Ms. Anwal Khairi. If you make too much calcium, uh, what if one consumes too much calcium? What would that do? Okay, now, uh, Anur, uh, there is a simple way of uh, answering this question and something that has come on to light uh, recently. Okay, the simple way is whatever we take in is very finely regulated by the body. One of the slides that I put up uh, showed, you know, the regulation by the gut, the amount uh, absorbed uh, by your intestines, uh, the regulation at the kidney. So whatever excess you take tends to be taken away from the body if it's not needed. But recently, consuming too much of calcium supplements in an elderly person has been said, postulate to, to also affect the heart. So me being an orthopedic surgeon, we were actually uh, a little bit alarmed but when I speak to my cardiologists, they say these are all uh, study-based. So I think that is more for the physician to answer. But if you ask me just offhand, whatever we take, whatever we take is always regulated very finely with the body. So we okay. tend to lose whatever we don't need. Even the vitamins that we take. Yeah. I see. Okay. So that, that's the body, body intelligence. Lah. Yes. Yep, yep, it is. Yeah, it's just uh, so interesting just now because when you were saying about how uh, excess calcium can actually affect the heart in some uh, elderly people and then suddenly the thunder was so loud. It's as if you were, <laughs> you were stressing on that point and then, you know, so timeliness is everything. Thunder bunyi cicak lah, that would have been Oh yeah, that would have been tragic. <laughs> okay, doctor, next we have a question from Miss Chan Li Hong. Hi, doctor, I'm 40 years old. So far, no symptoms of joints problem. Very good. But should I start taking glucosamine just for precautionary measures? This is a good question as well because if uh, there are a lot of people who take calcium and glucosamine. Okay, so um, this is easy to answer. No, you shouldn't finish. End of story. Now, <laughs> the use of supplements, okay, okay uh, the use of supplements, while we tend to think that it's preventive of issues, it's never preventive. There is always a reason for us taking it. Now, like glucosamine, okay, we, we even the studies of uh, taking glucosamine in symptomatic joint pain is a little bit clouded with uh, a lot of times uh, it's attributed to a placebo effect. So to answer, you are, a prob you are definitely a healthy 40-year-old. You don't have symptoms or joint problem. You do not need glucosamine. Yeah. All right, there you go. You do not need glucosamine. You're healthy. So all is good, Miss Chan Li Hong. Okay. And from Sharifah Majida, how to prevent osteoporosis, sorry, osteopenia and osteoporosis when we attain menopause? Maybe you would like to uh, explain again what is osteopenia and the difference yeah. between that and osteoporosis. Now, uh, when, when we assess uh, bone quality, we, we actually mm -hmm. draw a graph, okay, uh, as to the density of the bone compared to that of a younger individual or compared to that of someone of that age. Now, the standard deviation for any curve is uh, 2.5. So if you deviate in a negative component more than 2.5, you consider yourself to be osteoporosis. If yours is still at a lower level, but has not reached 2.5, we call it osteoporosis. Oops. Okay. Pardon? Ah, you got me back. Okay. Uh, yeah, so yeah. <laughs> connection uh, problem. If, okay. Yeah, you're back. Yeah, if, if you look at all the things that we discussed, uh, we actually discussed methods to maintain your bone mass after uh, attaining your maximal bone mass and how you can after menopause. So if you lead a healthy lifestyle, you ensure that you exercise well, 
you continue being effective, you eat healthy and appropriate, yeah, you you will be able to control the amount of loss that you have. Yeah. Okay, that's that's very good to know. Um, actually, the food intake is amount to everything, yeah, doctor. I mean, in, in any health problem, it's usually to do with food intake. Hello. <laughs> okay. All right. Anyway, oh, no, let's take a look. Okay. <laughs> I thought you were asking the question and answering it yourself, so I just kept. Oh going. no no no! no. <laughs> yeah, I tend to do that also sometimes. So much no, eating. No, no, no. Yeah, I I think it's a balance of everything. Yeah, it's like. much eating. You agree? <laughs> oh, no, no. <laughs> no worries. Okay, just kidding. Okay, let's take a look at the next question. Uh, uh -huh. Sharif I hope that answers your question. Oh, there's another question from Ms. Anu al -Kharid. I came across a patient who had spinal cord problem and became irresponsive, which the doctor said due to too much calcium. Hmm. Yikes. Okay. What's your comment on this? Oh, I can't comment because I wasn't the problem. Yeah. Well, I wasn't the yeah, doctor. Yeah, yeah. Of course, yeah. Now, there's of not course, much we know that calcium is not only for uh, bone health, Okay, mm. it has so many functions, even mm. the function of the muscle, muscle firing, uh, conduction mm. of nerves, all depend on calcium. So, yeah. it's like totally uh, different from, uh, from, from, from this talk. But just to tell you that uh, calcium is such an important element in most functions of the body, whether it's muscle function, whether it's nerve, uh, or any part of the body. Okay. So I, I, I can't really answer that question. Okay, no worries. I, I think that's fair. Okay, we've got another question here, and I think it's the last question. This is from Ms. Ada uh, AR. Doctor, uh, her doctor just joined. Not sure whether you already have covered this question. If someone is suffering from back pain, history of sleep this, ooh, sleep this, okay. He gets the injection in the last four to five years. Now uh, it is back. Is it okay if he treats the back pain with a chiropractor? Okay, I think basically this is about your opinion lah on the practices of a chiropractor. Okay. So, okay, um, you know, sometimes giving a diplomatic answer irritates uh, people even more. Uh, my whole BFM uh, talk was with the chiropractor the one last week and we actually had quite a nice discussion. I think what I can share here is that back pain is only a symptom, okay? Uh, not every back pain is due to the lower back. It can be also problems in your intestine, in, 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 in gynecological problems. They can manifest as back pain. Another common cause, even a kidney stone can cause back pain. So essentially, before you decide on going to a physiotherapist or a chiropractor or the uh, Taman Sensei or a Tukang Urot or a Thai Masseuse, I think it is very, very important to obtain a diagnosis. So you need to know what's causing the back pain. Sometimes dangerous things can cause the back pain, although most back pain is a simple muscle strain. So the way I look at it, before you decide whether it's safe to go, uh, probably see a doctor, try to get what is the diagnosis of the back pain. And if the back pain is caused by muscle strains and all, yes, please go ahead. You can see your therapist or a chiro. Okay, all right. Up. I hope that answers your question. Uh, side IR. Okay, we've got a few um, heart shaped faces and a few thumbs up for you from Ms. Liana Ferdow. <laughs> Saida AR, Akif Najib. Yeah, okay. Well, that's very good. Okay, okay doctor, okay. before we wrap up the show, since we don't have any more, quest uh, any more questions, but, uh, you know, Sajila, we'd like to get to know you up close and personal, if you don't mind spending a few more minutes with us. Um, okay. Yeah, has, has it always been your ambition to become an orthopedic surgeon? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, that's um, a few months. I Okay, so so Alan Chapumas, I always wanted to be an engineer. Okay, oh, so okay. How different yeah, is yeah, that? My, my, my ambition was to be an engineer, and uh, mm. somehow life takes you on a path, and I became a doctor. So, I mean, doing orthopedics and uh, minimally invasive orthopedics is 
just a step away from being an engineer. So technically, okay. I'm close to being an engineer or a carpenter, the way you look at it. <laughs> Yeah, so, that's true. That's true. Yeah, so the Chopu oh, Master is always going to be an engineer, and naturally in uh, medical field, I, I I always wanted to be an orthopedic surgeon. I see. Okay. All right. So you have been with uh, Columbia Asia for how long now? Okay. I when I started, my beard was still totally black, and it's been about <laughs> ten years. Yeah, ten years going on, ten going years. on eleven. Yeah. Okay. They told me and, that uh, they a big gift. I'm sorry, they told you what? That uh, completing 10 years, I'm supposed to get a big gift from Columbia Asia. Oops, okay. I hope somebody out there who's relevant will be listening, <laughs> tuning into this. <laughs> okay, yeah, Doctor, about your BFM stints? Yeah. No problem. About your BFM stints, I understand that you are still uh, on BFM. Yes, yes, I am. I, yeah, I, so, I, uh, I ladies have, and gentlemen. I have a show once, once a month. Um, mm. At what time? Predominantly, yeah, so we, we have it at 4 o'clock, normally on a Tuesday, but okay. with the pandemic, it's uh, been a, uh, increasingly no longer a live show, it's more recorded. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And I hope to do live soon. Okay, but we're glad that you are with us doing live here. Live. Yeah. Uh, yeah. On an uh, Columbia Asia platform. And of course, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you'd like to hear more of uh, Dr. Harjit, more of his uh, advice on orthopedic uh, matters, you can always tune into uh, BFM. I think maybe the next time uh, we could have an announcement and post oh, yeah. it on our Facebook. Yeah, sure. That would be nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, um, parting words, uh, Harjit. Is okay. there, uh, if there is anything that you would want to a, say to our audience? Slide. Yeah. Sorry. So I got a parting slide. <laughs> okay, a parting so, slide. Okay, okay. Let's take a look at the parting yeah, yeah. slide. Okay. So I, I think slide. that. Are there? I, Can I we think... take a look at the slide? The last slide? Okay. okay. Oh, here we go. Okay, so All right. just remember that uh, the bone is not just a PVC pipe, but it's a constantly evolving organ or tissue. And yeah. we have to be mindful that we build up the maximal bone strength up to early adulthood. That's about the age of 30. Yeah. And uh, while a lot of us are always doom and gloom, prevention of osteoporosis is achievable uh, with a good understanding of the simpler things that we went through. And I always feel that keeping yourself active is a key towards having good bone health. That's my okay. parting word. Thank you very, very much, Dr. Harjit, and thanks for okay, making the time. Yes. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, oh, no problem at all. Ladies Thank and gentlemen, you. If, you, uh, if you had just joined us and if you'd like to hear what um, the, the information that Dr. Has shared with us because it's been very, very informative and it's also important for all of us to take note of. So uh, this video will be on Columbia Asia Facebook at your convenience. Yeah. Okay, so okay. thank you again, Dr. Harjit Singh. Wow, wow. Sorry about the thunder. <laughs> it's okay. It adds, it adds to the effect. <laughs> uh, Dr. Okay. Consultant orthopedic surgeon from Columbia Hospital, Bukit Rima. Thank you. Bye, Doctor. Bye. Bye. See you again.